Alright, so hey everyone, uh, today I want to take a look at the controls for Quake Enhanced Edition. This just released with uh, QuakeCon, uh, and it's an excellent port of Quake 1. Uh, there's just some control issues that hopefully we can see uh, addressed. So to jump into it, uh, the camera uses a 26.5% circular dead zone. Um, circular dead zones are excellent. I think Quake 4 is the only other Quake game that uses circular dead zone. Uh, this has mostly full uh, diagonal movement. Uh, it's very difficult to tell horizontally. Uh, you'll see maybe if you can notice um, the subtle diagonals just with the lines on the wall. Um, but it's much more noticeable looking straight up or down and that's even more noticeable when using low resolution because uh, you can see the shimmering of the pixels when uh, it's moving. So you can see just moving to the right of this axis, um, you start seeing movement occur immediately. But what's interesting is there's a very tiny range on the left side that isn't registering um, diagonal movement. Um, this ideally uh, should be fixed, but uh, overall there's some, uh, most of the stick uh, registers diagonally. And uh, this is the only instance uh, that I've played of uh, Quake ports having full diagonal movement. So this is easily um, the, the best implementation of any, any Quake port so far. Uh, movement uses uh, about a 31% dead zone, or I tested a 31% dead zone. The actual config um, says it's uh, the left stick dead zone is 24, but 31% uh, is where I've actually noticed movement occurring and I, I haven't been able to test it around 24% or see anything around there. It could be that the curve starts that slow and I just can't notice it, but 31% uh, is what I tested. Uh, it's very difficult to notice uh, diagonal movement, but it seems there's full diagonal movement for uh, movement and it doesn't seem to have these little uh, the small restricted range that the camera had, so movement is ideal. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, uh, back to the dead zone size. 26% uh, is pretty large, uh, but it is a very common uh, dead zone size. Um, but uh, we don't have options for the dead zone, so that's something I'd like to request. Um, options for both the camera and the movement dead zone. The movement isn't as important, but small dead zones make uh, precise aiming more easy. And a slider ranging from a 0% to like a 40% with single uh, percent increment should cover every range of, um, of player preferences. Uh, the next thing I want to jump into is the aim smoothing. Uh, this is the giant elephant in the room and the single thing really crippling uh, this game so far. Uh, what this does is cause your turn um, speed to build up over time. So if you push the stick fully, you expect to move at your maximum turn speed, but smoothing causes it to turn up faster. So if you make quick adjustments, you can see that uh, very little movement occurs. Um, this seems to be applied um, individually um, per axis, which makes it especially egregious. And I say that because uh, normally when I test uh, restricted diagonal movement in games, I'll uh, move horizontally like this and bob the stick up and down. But there is diagonal movement. It's just that uh, when it seems like when you move like this, the vertical movements don't have time to build up. So uh, you're just kind of stuck with mostly horizontal movement. And uh, vertically, if I do the same here, you can see that uh, there is some horizontal movements, but they're nowhere near as drastic as they should be uh, for these kind of stick movements. So together what this makes is that your uh, turn speeds are inconsistent because you don't have direct control over this, and you have to just kind of predict what how fast it's building up, but then your diagonals are exactly the same. So if I try to track um, this face right here, I'm having a hard time doing that. Like, I'm, I'm genuinely trying, and part of it is due to the large dead zone, but most of it is due to the aim smoothing. Like, I can't predict 
what the cursor is doing. Like if it's moving too slow, I'll try to give it a bit more pressure, but then the smoothing builds up and I vastly overcorrect. Uh, it makes it very difficult to aim at anything and you really have to uh, rely on your strafe movement to line up shots uh, precisely. Uh, this is especially crippling in multiplayer where uh, players can move very erratically. Um, this uh, smoothing really needs an option. It doesn't matter if it's a slider or a toggle, uh, but just something to disable it. Uh, the other aiming option I'd like to request is uh, one for the acceleration curve. Uh, I've tried testing this curve and a big note um, on this is that uh, smoothing might have affected it. I've tried to um, let, let the uh, turn speed build up so that smoothing wouldn't have an effect, but it's possible uh, it did. So um, the curve that I tested is kind of a very shallow S curve, and there's nothing wrong with this curve, but players uh, could be given the option to customize it, this to their preference. Um, I don't know if this curve plays well, just giving players control over an exponent and have it neatly customized like that, um, but if not, uh, switching to a power function and giving players control over the degree ranging from uh, 1.0 to 3.0, a linear curve to a cubic curve with 0.1 increments, uh, would really give players a lot of control to fine tune their name. But the actual curve doesn't ma um, actual uh, function doesn't matter as long as it neatly um, transitions between uh, exponent values. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is um, the uh, weapon wheel. So I'm really surprised the weapon wheel is added, and uh, this weapon wheel is awesome. I'm uh, in the hub for uh, this illusion of eternity uh, right now, which has the most weapons available. Uh, normally it's eight weapons. Um, but you can see it, it slows down like the modern Dune games have done. But I think this weapon wheel is way better than, than those games because there's no tap input for a previous weapon, which means the weapon wheel can register uh, very, be re very responsive, and you can rebind the weapon wheel to like the left bumper if you want and not have the control of the wheel switch to the uh, left stick, it still controls with the right stick. So I think those are pretty big improvements on there. Um, one thing is that the slowdown begins immediately, so even if you switch very fast, you kind of just stutter. Um, and uh, you can't move when you're in the wheel, like it just kind of preserves your heading, you can't change directions. So an option to disable the, um, the slowdown as well as being able to move within the wheel would be requested. I mean, these are really petty complaints, but uh, it'd be nice. The big thing with the wheel though is the dead zone. So the dead zone is shared with the aiming dead zone, it's just a right stick dead zone. And uh, these should be separate. Uh, the reason for that uh, is because if you change the dead zone, um, if we either get an option or you change it on PC through the config, um, and set a low dead zone because uh, small dead zones are better for accuracy, um, having a low dead zone for the weapon wheel will actually make it easier to uh, accidentally switch to weapons you don't want. And that's because, see for the nail gun, uh, what I'm tracing right here is the arc range. Um, uh, for this angle, and that gets smaller the smaller the dead zone is. So if I'm tracing right around the current dead zone, you can see that uh, this range is lessened. And if you're using a 5% dead zone, which I'll try to dem demonstrate on screen right now, where you, um, you you'd only have to make very small adjustments to cycle through uh, multiple weapons. So just resetting the stick can uh, accidentally um, bleed over into a range, and uh, with a wheel with this many pie slices, that can happen more often than uh, a wheel with uh, only eight, like the default campaign has. Uh, but uh, that's why large dead zones can be uh, more useful for uh, weapon wheels. So a slider ranging from the default 26% uh, up through uh, the extreme like 90%. Uh, would be requested because players are already um, pegging the stick anyway when selecting um, their weapons. It doesn't matter and there's no real precision needed. Uh, the increments for this option don't matter. It could be 20, like, maybe even like, let's say like 30% is the new default and it increments in increments of like 10 or 20. Like, it doesn't matter. 
Um, but just having a very wide range would uh, be requested for a wheel slope. Um, a wheel dead zone and just having it separate from the camera dead zone. Uh, the last thing I want to request is fully customizable weapon bindings. Um, uh, some players uh, don't like uh, using weapon wheels and they prefer to have uh, weapons bound to the d-pad or the face buttons. There's already some presets on the um, on the d-pad but uh, having completely customizable options here would allow players to really set it up to their preference. And this would also help uh, PC keyboard and mouse players because currently if they want to rebind those, op uh, those, those binds, they have to use the dev console, which is a bit of a hassle. Now another option I'd like to see uh, able to be bound are uh, quick save and quick load. Um, we have uh, the system that was used for the uh, modern classic Doom ports where you go to the pause menu and then you use the shoulder buttons to quick save and quick load and this is functional but especially if you're only using the wheel for weapon swapping um, we have the entirety of the d-pad and face buttons that could be used for um, quick save and quick load options so it would be uh, nice to have those so then we could just uh, not need to pause every time we wanted to uh, quick save or quick load but um, that about covers it. So as a quick summary, um, dead zone options for the camera, the movement, and the wheel dead zone. Um, an option in e either a slider or a toggle to disable the aim smoothing. Um, an option uh, slider to customize the acceleration curve. Um, ideally with a decent range from like linear to whatever curve they're using. Um, for the weapon wheel, an option to disable the slowdown, um, as well as to be able to move freely in it. Um, and uh, uh, options to bind uh, weapons to any button or um, you know, options to bind uh, weapons to any button we want, as well as uh, quick save and quick load. Uh, this would greatly improve the quality um, of this, uh, the controls in this version. Uh, this port is fantastic. I've been, you know, complaining about all these things, but this port is truly a fantastic. Uh, Night Dive's been known for putting out really great quality ports. Uh, but uh, unfortunately the controls are the only limiting factor for this. Uh, otherwise this port is kind of the best um, version of Quake 1 we could have asked for on console. Alright, so this section uh, is just a demonstration in uh, Quake Spasm, a source port for uh, Quake on PC. Uh, this has very good uh, stick controls and ideally uh, this is what uh, these changes would, uh, would lead to. So there's no uh, smoothing by default in Quake Spasm, so where you move the stick is the speed you're going to immediately start moving at. And uh, if we bob around the axes like our test did before, you can see that uh, those are being reflected and we don't need to wait before we start seeing diagonal movement occur. Uh, I've set a 0% dead zone. I won't show uh, different sizes, but uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You, at 0%, any stick movement creates cursor movement. But I will show the curves, uh, what I'm requesting. So this is 2, which is a quadratic curve. So you can see that uh, acceleration starts out very slow, but then builds up to the maximum sensitivity. And I'm going to make some circles for comparisons. And bumping it up to 3, a cubic curve. Acceleration starts even slower, and then builds up to the same maximum. And make the same kind of circles with my stick. You can see those circles are smaller with the cursor, because the low end acceleration is lower. Bring it to a linear curve, and this starts out way faster. Uh, so 10% uh, of your, your movement past the dead zone gives you 10% of your total speed. Um, 
So we can see that it starts out much faster, but it builds up to the same cap. And of course the same circles are much larger, because of how much faster it is. Um, so when I'm requesting uh, 0.1 increments, this allows players to really fine-tune where uh, their exact uh, preferred curve is. This can differ between uh, preference on sensitivity and dead zone size, so uh, having that kind of granular customization would really help. And if I do the tracking test I did before, you can see that uh, I'm not overshooting anything like I was uh, uh, with the with smoothing. Of course, uh, the customized dead zones and acceleration curve help a lot, but it is really mostly a smoothing issue that was causing that. So uh, that's hopefully what we'll see the controls um, feel like once uh, once we get some options. So uh, yep, thanks for watching. Hopefully, uh, night dive will see this or respond to other people's feedback on this, and we'll uh, see these things fixed pretty quick. So uh, thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day.